Fortunately, the stealth techniques used by rootkit creators are not flawless. The presence of a rootkit in the system can always be detected. How can you do this? First, by verifying signatures. Having a database of programs that are known to be rootkits and checking your system for their existence. This solution may not be very effective, but it's easy to run. That's why it's become automated and now forms a part of the Microsoft Malicious Software Removal Tool. You can also detect anomalies in the operation of your system. A rootkit will modify the operation of a system by definition. It will try to hide something in the system. This principle is the basis for checkers and detectors like System Virginity Verifier, provided by Joanna Rutkowska. The tool can be used to evaluate the state of a system. If a system has been installed recently, it has no antivirus and no new drivers, it will be evaluated as a 0 or 1 on the infection scale, which means that the probability that the system is infected with a rootkit is very low. When you install an antivirus, the system will probably move up on the level of the risk evaluation. As you can see, a system that had a rootkit installed was assessed as level 5 on the scale of 0 to 5. A change in the operation of the system was very apparent. The third method for detecting rootkits was deployed by Mark Rusinovich in the Rootkit Revealer. This tool is another component of the Sysinternal suite. Rootkit Revealer works as shown in the picture. The assumption behind it is that since a rootkit hides something in a system, a user mode program like Rootkit Revealer won't be able to see the hidden files, processes, accounts, or services. But if Rootkit Revealer sends the same query without consulting user mode and kernel mode APIs, but refers directly to low level structures, for example, files on a disk, it will be able to compare the results between the two calls and see a potential discrepancy. The exposed difference must be due to something. It's due to a rootkit hiding something from the first call. Let's now find out how this works in practice. Let's start by looking at the rootkit from the viewpoint of an attacker's computer. The computer has Hacker Defender downloaded from the internet and installed. The program's basic version is made up from only two files, a binary file, an exe file which is in fact the rootkit, and the ini file which is the rootkit's configuration file. If you take a look at the configuration file, it turns out that it only requires to specify what objects are to be hidden in a target computer system. They can include processes, services, registry entries, free disk space, open ports, or files and directories. When hiding files and directories, you need to remember that the use of wildcard characters can be dangerous. By typing, for example, W star, you can hide the entire Windows system folder from a user. Our version of Hacker Defender has additionally a client program. This version is not only a rootkit but also a backdoor. What's more, the back door is cloaked by the rootkit. Let's now try to connect to a computer that already runs a Hacker Defender rootkit and the back door that it hides. Submit the IP address of a selected computer, the port that is listed on by the hidden back door, and the password. We've successfully connected to the target computer. You can access the victim's command line interface. The last thing we'll do is taking a look at the contents of Cecil's desktop. Cecil is a user who logged onto the attacked computer. Note that the user's desktop, besides folders like auto runs, contains a zip archive and a folder named hxdef an hxdef100r folder, and a zip archive of the same name. A lot of suspicious elements. 
you can plainly see that they can be found in the user's desktop. Let's see now what the user sees. We'll switch to Windows XP where we're logged in as Cecil. Some objects are invisible in this view. To give you a better picture of this situation, let's create a new folder and create a file inside of it. Everything's in order. We'll create a second file. As you remember, the Hacker Defender Rootkit was set to hide objects that have the name starting with hxdef. We'll change the file name so that it includes that string. After the window is refreshed, it seems like the file is gone. Let's now change the file name of the second file to hxdef11 or a similar name. The name doesn't seem to change. After you refresh the window, the file disappears. The rootkit hides all objects that have the same name that starts with hxdef just as it was set to. The folder we created is visible in the desktop but seems to be empty. We know though that the folder does contain some files. What can be done in this case? Mark Rusinovich's rootkit revealer comes to the rescue. Clicking on the scan button will make the tool check if the system contains some objects that are hidden from users and administrators. Run the scanner. The scan shouldn't take too long. The first result are the zero-byte registry keys. The alarms are probably false positives. Rootkit Revealer shows them since if a registry key is empty, the Windows Registry Editor, RegEdit, will not display it. This serves as a reason for hiding data in zero-byte registry keys, which happens quite often. But the next results should never be here. The next rows reveal a discrepancy between what is visible for the user and what's really found in the system. A user can't see registry keys that, as you can gather from their names, are related to Hacker Defender. The directory and zip archive we mentioned before is invisible to the user. You can also see here the files that we hit a moment before. We changed their names. Detecting a rootkit is possible as you can see, but removing it from a system is a much more demanding task. Before we move on, it's worth taking note of the race between Hacker Defender and Rootkit Revealer. As you've seen, Rootkit Revealer is able to successfully expose a Hacker Defender rootkit. Knowing about this discovery, the Hacker Defender developer tried to get the better of the scanner and hide the rootkit again. How can you defeat Rootkit Revealer? A Hacker Defender rootkit's configuration file contains a section where you can specify processes that the rootkit will not hide from. The section names Rootkit Revealer as one of the such processes by default. What is the purpose of this action? Scanning a computer with Rootkit Revealer, the program sees all the objects in the system. There'd be no discrepancies, and the programs would report that there's no difference. Mark Rusinovich, who wasn't working for Microsoft at the time, was notified about this move by the tech support staff who detected this in their customers' machines. A counteraction is hiding Rootkit Revealer from the Hacker Defender. The scanner creates services with pseudorandom names and so on. This is in fact a no-win situation. You can create new defense mechanisms and bypasses for both sides ad infinitum. If you bought a Sony BMG CD several years back and played it on your computer, your machine was infected with a Sony Rootkit. The company's copy protection measures ended in a real nightmare. 
To protect their digital rights, Sony included in their CDs a piece of software that operated exactly like a rootkit. The software would install and hide in the system to track and prevent copying the music. After the scandal was made public by Mark Rusinovich, Sony admitted to making a mistake and withdrew the rootkit infected CDs. Coming back to the main issue, what steps can you take if you detect a rootkit? If you're able to find legitimate sounding guidelines for the rootkit removal on the internet, you can well follow them. Unfortunately, it's far more probable that eliminating the rootkit will involve disk formatting and reinstalling the system. Removing some files or changes made by the rootkit doesn't mean that all changes have been founded and deleted. Thank you.